I even think they're getting into the RLM system. I just can't keep them out, folks. It's crickets. I think even Grimner heard it. Crickets in the system. Why is that? I guess that became more apparent to me. As I told you last week, we've run into a little bit of trouble within the people that we work with, thinking that everything was okay, but they're really lying. All these people lie to each other. And that's another awareness you have to have. And things aren't so straight up. And if you want to do some changing and get some changes back to get some normalcy, you're really going to have to be sharp. And not a lot of people want to do that. But, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, everyone wants to make excuses. I don't know why. It's not uh, it really. It's not going to happen without your integration. Seeing the problem, everyone that does all this big research needs to take that research and apply it. This will be BTWRLM three two eight. For those of you on the aftercasts, because uh, that'll give you your links and you put it in. I noticed that it's variable on you put that code in, but anyway, it gives you a definition. You can kind of see that three twenty eight will give you to the content links and then. You, you can start your, your, if there's an interest for you, and I, again, I use these notices to us, these things we call news, I don't care where it comes from, you can use them as uh, evidence, and that's the point. You need to make records, failures, it's not, not your opinion, no one will listen to that, and it's easily destroyed, and uh, we found out here this last week, was after I told you last week that uh, we had a little bit of trouble we were going to have to contend with a county that seems to have lost its way. Uh, my colleague did very, very well. Turned it looks like sounds like at this point we turned he turned it around. We worked for two days to work out how in three minutes he was going to do a going to do a uh, public comment that was going to make the proper record. And sure enough, he pulled it off. And so it can be done, folks. It's just a matter of a right now. It, it, it's all hands on deck. You can't you can't stay in the hold and inspect the inside of the ship here while it's going to be sinking. And I don't know what else to say about that. There's so many ways to make this thing work, and we're, we're just not. And as I say, the microcosm of the miner is the macrocosm we know as America. Inside the mining community, they're just as, uh, just as reluctant to go do the simple, simple things. They'd rather give the responsibility to others that will lead them down the path. They put the ring and the accessory uh, to the crime against them in the nose, and that the one that takes the lead drowns them. And most people don't realize that. And I, I just don't want us to say more more to it. And that water uh, can very well be poisoned, as I told you also. Be careful. We were talking about the Flint, Michigan promotion, that their water's cleared up, but they were talking about over 3,000 jurisdictions that were showing the lead. And I said, be careful. Don't it's, Lead's not the only thing. Well, this week, it's almost as if uh, as if it's here to help us out again. Uh, we go to the next week and see the evidence that PFAS's are a crisis that expands as millions of Americans in 43 states are exposed to toxic chemicals. So, again, there's so much so-called um, science, you know, living through living through chemistry. We never thought, or maybe, well, we didn't as people. The industry certainly was checking it, and they checked out and found out they were doing it, so a lot of cover-ups started happening with the help of the attorneys, the bar members, and the, and the, and the courts that uh, these uh, PFASs are uh, per- or polyfluoral alkaline substances. And it's, I think I think if you, like Teflon is, is one of these things. Very useful, but we didn't contain it. And so there's lots of things in the water system, as I told you before. They don't test for everything. And you heard in the last week's story that they don't, they what they can test for, they may not afford to be able to test for. That this is a, the, a latent problem. And those of you that are interested in and maybe here, this, this is another piece of evidence that you can start to pull together for yourself. You go to a place that, whether that's the EPA and not checking it, whether that's going to be your local jurisdiction to be required to check it, you can start gra grabbing these stories up as the lead to your evidence that we need. And uh, again, getting back to that evidence, it was so important. I tell you about making a record, and I said, even if no one listens to you, that record stands if it's a public record. It just had, like I said, this is what happened to us last week. My colleague had made a, a presentation to a county in 2014, and it came back to bite them. And it was just so happened one of the commissioners was still in office. It came back to bite them in a bad way. 
And he was able to produce the fact of that. I was able to find, by accident, I found that it was on the Internet, the, the publication of the news report for that hearing way back in 2014. So it came back. We were able to show the object. He was able to show the objective basis of the problem, be able to catch the commissioners in a, in a willful disregard, if you will. And uh, now uh, that, again, the embarrassment and or the failure uh, to, and then seeing that there's a better way to go. In other words, it wasn't just a blaming. It was actually showing if you follow the black and white, we wouldn't even be in the problems that we're seeing today. It's agreeing to these problems as we go along, the consensus ideas. That's what's our problem. There's no accountability up front. Now, I just can't tell you how important that is for us to understand what that is as a society here pretty soon, or else I really don't know how we can expect things go more than what we keep complaining about right now. There's nothing to, to stop it. Like I say, the, one of the tags on the, on the Twitter for the broadcast is bad don't fix itself. It get, behind, get you behind the wedge shed. Then what's that? Folks, it's not you getting me. I'm not taking you. You're supposed to learn from me that this is how you do it to others that are in an official, so-called official capacity that are harming you or otherwise, other people. And I mentioned the, the, that's those similarly situated. That's an equity principle. And if you start to look at this stuff, you start to realize how to approach. It doesn't have to go to court. I talk about this in the stand-up, in the part where it ultimately could go to court. And if your whole presentation happens to focus on that end result, a lot of times we avoid the problems. And so it's not, you know, I don't know what people hear me say. That's uh, what I'm saying is really subtle, and I don't know how to explain that. Until, until you get involved, you start to understand as you move through, or as you might have an interacted, interaction with me, what is needs to be regarded seriously and distinctly from a lot of other things that you don't need to talk about. And that's how you find the very first point of departure from the black and white. You don't have to argue the minutiae. Like I kind of say in a, a climate change, when you find out that the whole premise is a fabricated definition, it's the, the statistic on top of it on an unproven hypothesis, why is there any discussion about argument over science? It doesn't start in science. It's not going to end in science because we haven't even started the process correctly. It was a fabricated definition for an outcome through a process. It's a political process, a global political process. And for me, it's really hard to understand that it is global. That It's kind of a mind blower, but it is. I don't have to really uh, deal with that no more. And there's agents of change, of this change, this transformation, all transparent to most of us. We see the fallout and we complain. Our inner uh, free being wants to complain, but we don't necessarily take the next steps uh, that I keep telling you is in the news uh, to start uh, anticipating. And uh, so here we have, uh, what did I say before? I said, it's, it's disconcerting, but I'm not going to, I can't stop. I, this is really not something to stop. I told you that. When I pointed out about the copying uh, that YouTube becomes a place to get video and audio, and then you see all this surveillance equipment, it's a technology, so-called AI, coming together to focus. And then we saw that Adobe program that could take your voice and uh, you could text your voice, uh, change your voice uh, recordings with your own voice. And, and then I also pointed out to you that if you go to the Google and you see the broadcast, my voice is transcribed. Sometimes not so accurately, but but accurately enough that they're going to be manipulating that. And all these little things, Israel being able to fabricate synthesized DNA, and uh, you saw the video, real-time transformation of video. They're having abilities. I told you in the in the future, they will. They, if you become a target, you will be doing whatever they want you to do, and you may not have ever been in that condition. Well, here we have. Uh, Google, a trained AI to make translations sound more like you. So this is following along that the news I've been telling you is coming. It's it's here, and, and one of the main players, it's a big data player, is, is Google, and they are, in fact, taking up where the Adobe people were, uh, were pointing. And before I get too much further, I forgot a production note here. Hopefully, we'll out, we'll out distance the temperature. I had a generous benefactor donate the antennas I needed, but I couldn't get them to work in time for this broadcast. So, although I've made some changes, it's going to get a little bit hotter. We might cut out. So on that note, for a production notice, before I move on, just forgot to remember to forget to remember. 
Uh, those of you that are live streaming, I can't do much more about the problem if it does cut out. But those that come in and get up the files and download the files, if you could wait uh, maybe three or four hours, uh, if I don't, if I cut off maybe five hours or six hours uh, to get the files, because I can put together the broadcast that you missed instead of publish uh, republishing of a shortened broadcast that has no finish. If you could hold off a bit before you do your downloads till a few hours after the broadcast, I'd, I'd appreciate it just to get you the better file because I upload a better quality file uh, than uh, certainly a full file than than what you'll get on a breakout. So if you could do that, the people that are syndicating live, you, I'm, I apologize for any cutouts. We're trying to so keep things uh, solved, but uh, I guess enough there. Appreciate all your re your rebroadcasts and your simulcasts. Again, the word has to get out. Oh, and as it occurs to me, again, the thumbs down I see, I appreciate the thumbs down, but I don't appreciate them really to mean anything. So for those of you that don't uh, like what I'm saying, I need to know why. Uh, if you have a better word, I need to know so I can reinform people. Uh, that's a really big key to me. Those of you that thumbs up, I appreciate it. I understand that helps get the, gets, uh, the word out, although we're so low. Again, we're being blocked out. I can't understand how the, we can be on a multi-billion uh, member type of a condition in YouTube and, and only get 10 or 15 views. That's uh, really nonsense. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, we need, if you appreciate the word, get it out. I'm only one uh, one guy, and I don't really integrate so well. And the fact that when I look around, I, I integrate less and less. As I see where this thing is going, it's going the where it was supposed to, and, and there's not much uh, other because there's not much integration to really control the matter more than complain. In, in all sectors of society, it's going down the path of well, everyone can do the euphemisms of the Orwellian dystopian future. It's going, to, it's going there because of people like uh, people. Yeah, corporations are people too. See how they even got they got everyone uh, doing the meme. Uh, Google is a, is a corporation. They, they're in there for the profit. They're in there for how they can exploit. They're in there to work with the government in the war against you. I don't know how many times I have to tell you that. It makes it easy to really predict all this, and it's not just a position of complaining. I just can't tell you that just complaining, certainly, it may be free speech, and it may be your right, but it isn't effective. I don't know what else to say. I should just shut up right there and have you guys all turn around and go do something, but it won't happen. I just don't get it. And in that regard, I appreciate that you're still listening. Maybe one day think you can get it. But here we are. As I move up a tab from months and months and months and months ago, uh, like history, this news repeats itself, so there's no excuse that you don't find evidence of the problems. Uh, again, the battlefield that we're in, editing video now, now Google was doing audio and just transcribing and then also making things that sound like you better, more more like you. Again, this is all just, they call it AI. This is just someone, a programmer. They're actually putting people on this task to do this. And uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but mankind is not so perfect. So that should give you a hint on really the future that what it this holds. But now, uh, and Stanford uh, gets involved uh, editing video by editing the text, where Adobe took it with the text audio. Now, that I told you that was the lead. It's kind of falling quickly from there about being able to put words in your mouth. They now can put video to your face, apparently uh, well enough uh, that. I guess it, it, it must get past scrutiny in television and film. Actors often flub small bits and otherwise flawless performance. Uh, other times they leave out a critical word. For editors, the only solution so far is the acceptable uh, to accept the flaws or fix them with expensive reshoots. Imagine, however, if the editor could modify video using a text transcript. Much like word processing, the editor could easily add new words, delete unwanted ones, and completely rearrange the pieces by dragging and dropping them as needed to assemble and finish a finished video that looks almost flawless to the untrained eye. Now, that's the uh, the point, is that our eye has to get much more clear and sharp. And I can tell you, I've done video quite a long time. I'm a, a fairly decent photographer and a videographer. And I'll tell you what, it's getting very difficult. Now, I may, help, I may not be helping that I'm uh, getting a little bit along. You get tired of looking at some th stuff. Uh, you don't get practice in keeping up with the technology. It's like a lot of information I'm just not even interested in and even holding anymore. I'm so focused on trying to make this uh, this thing work that we're doing. It kind of uh, it filters you out as well, man. You just don't keep that in mind. But I'm finding it very, very difficult to see 
like in these new pictures, the still pictures are getting much, much better video. Not so hard, but it's still, it's getting so close. And uh, again, the future is going to be whether or not we can keep up with our, it reminds me of my instrument flight training. You got to, you got to be in, you got to trust your instruments. In this case, our instruments are really easy to de defeat. I'm talking about our, our uh, bodily f senses. And so uh, you really have to put a mind to it. You almost have to take two steps back, anything in the future going on. But here they have now video. First, they started with the mouth, re-mouthing, uh, re-mouthing images. Now they they can just change things. And they're talking here in the context of film and news. And I'm saying, listen, this is going to get to the point whoever gets a hold of technology can do anything to anyone. It's almost as if you're going to have to have your own cameras on over just to protect yourself at some point. Now, most of us aren't going to be involved with that, but you get into the places where you're going to be involved and they're going to want to know about you and they're going to want to see whether or not you're doing the, you know, the status quo where, where the agenda is going. And so yeah, that may scare some people off. That may keep people from going in to do certain things. I don't know. But right now we're in the time of, a, of adjustment and so we can kind of, learn how to move this thing through just want you to know that the the tools of putting words in your mouth putting an image in your on your face an action in hand are here the it's really again what i predicted was coming it was a logical progression out of the technology that's really cool but at the same point we're noticing that lots of it's being used by nefarious type of actors and there's always this many agendas running whether or not that's just human, what, what the human sins working or an overall agenda of do-gooders that don't have you as a focus, have some other inanimate object as a focus, however irrational. But here we are. So editing now, editing video, this is fascinating. This brings up the idea of all the video of 911 as well. See, folks, there's, it's not even old, it's just not even new stuff. This is just they're telling us more that it's more publicly known. I don't understand, it doesn't tell us how back long ago they knew how to do this so you can't even trust your eyes or your ears you can't trust so-called science if the israeli dna fabrication they want to get you to say words and this and that and set you up they want to put some kind of uh, they want to get you on epstein's plane they might be able to do it real easily in the future they want to, you know, as they did what Alex Jones put a bunch of uh, emails on his on his in his uh, file box and it was full of child porn. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be easy work for everybody. What's coming up is that they'll actually put people in places that you can't really tell. And this is again back to evidence, and you're going to have to be able to be careful on how this works. And a part of that in, a part of that problem becomes again the uh, your systems, these digital systems that we work in. A, you know, those of us that are in it, we all, it's, I'm, I'm talking to the choir, obviously, and those that are listening, I'm talking to the choir, but the word has to get out that there's ways to be vulnerable and that we can uh, we can continue to check about it or keep a check about it. And there, there, there's another reminder coming out of malware bytes, and uh, you can, I guess, get their, their products to uh, do various things, to check on Meet Extend Bro. A new DNS changer, Trojan, protecting adware. This comes in through adware, and it it goes in and it adjusts. I don't know how the computer, allow, all these people allow the, that this can even happen to your system, but at least you you should see a, a nice solid notice that doesn't want to go away if it's a serious thing like this. If you're not going in from your place and they're going in from theirs, then maybe there should be a check. But anyway, they, they come in and they change your uh, the way your computer hooks up, and they actually change a field form and then the settings inside a, a script through an adware attack. The, pro the problem is that that's through the adware attack. What if there's a, a more dangerous actor, if you will, that, that's out there? What if your life is now, uh, like science, silent weapons require wars is predicting your life is in the digital realm. Your whole life is, is now vulnerable to an ad. And through that ad comes this attack that redirects all you. Remember we talked about DNS over... Uh, your DNS over whatever that was last week, I can't remember. Yeah, they start interfering with that thing. So they start in getting into systems you don't know about. We just do this stuff. We just we're, use the tool for our needs, but the system uses it for, for their needs. And so you have a vulnerability, and I would just say get familiar with your uh, your advanced TCP IP settings, I think they are, 
and look to see that it literally should most systems probably don't have anything in there. If they've got a field full of stuff, then maybe you've been attacked. And uh, if you take it out of there, it won't necessarily stop it. You can read this article. I'll give it to you. Uh, you heard it. So you've, you've got to go through this a bit. Get familiar with your system so you can do some routine checks. And this is what I do. I periodically go uh, when I do my updates and things or secu whatever security I've got. I go through and I look at certain things. I have tabs open, links, uh, I mean, uh, icons. I can go right to those places and look pretty quickly. Yeah, so I just go through and check the, some of the vulnerable points. When I see a story like this, I go and make another vulnerable point. Yes, it's a little bit of work. Yes, you're gonna, it gets tedious. But if you plan on protecting yourself against all this uh, future, the future they want, folks, is all I can say, uh, you're going to have to keep up with the tools that you use. It's like essentially that's it. You're going to use a tool. You better know how it's functioning, and you better know how it's functioning correctly. So this one goes in and actually changes all that DNS stuff. That you, uh, here we are saying Fire, uh, Firefox Mozilla was going to help you avoid and keep you secret. These people will redirect that. And so anyway, it's just a, you just look at a piece of uh, a form field, and you can see whether or not it's there. If it's there, then you're going to have to it'd probably likely go ahead and get malware bytes maybe to they might have a, uh, their Trojan Seeker will get rid of that for you. That would be helpful. I suppose they, they tell you to do this so you can promote it. The point is, it's there. Uh, it's another vulnerability. When I start seeing this thing, they can do these adulterations, these transcriptional ad adjustments and editings, not to what you're doing, but what to someone has a plan for you about. And then they can have vulnerabilities like this that direct your system without you knowing it. It's another uh, attack vector that you should be uh, concerned about. And I know maybe it doesn't seem like you should be, but I think I wouldn't, again, if what I do and where I go, what I'd have to do and what I use wasn't wasn't where it was already, I probably wouldn't care about this stuff. But So you have a system that's infected. Who cares? I'm just going to go watch YouTube videos. Well, that's not what I do. And so we got a, I got a whole other problem going on that i got to continue to keep up with against the uh, the bad actors that are out there. And speaking of bad actors, they come around as an elephant in the room that doesn't no one seems to want to talk about that is just a global um, oppressor and, and infiltrator. I don't know why people put up with this stuff. And that's the other thing. So we're back to the accountability. People just put up with this stuff. There's not just a focused focused action to take out this kind of thing. No, they, we, we promote it. We as a society promote this stuff. Uh, anyway, the Israeli firm behind software used to hack WhatsApp boasted that it can scrape data from Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google, and Microsoft cloud servers. Now remember, the cloud is not a cloud. The cloud is somebody else's computer. And so uh, here is the, the vulnerability I started to put together this week. Uh, we got all these notices to us. I thought it important again. But it's right in our face. They're telling us how vulnerable we are. We can get involved with all this cloud nonsense, or we can start to really think that the, what the vulnerabilities are and how vulnerable we are to someone taking this information and then reintegrating with us, depending on what we look like, or maybe even something we do that they want control of. Now, most of you that I might talk to may not be in those positions. The thing is that your society is. And these vulnerabilities end up coming and knocking on your door one day. And I don't know, you know, lots of people kind of don't don't think that's going to happen. It's so low key that they don't think it's going to happen. But anyway, the, the title says it all. An Israeli firm behind software used to hack. There's, there's people out there that want to hack. They're, I don't, I'm uh, not surprised anymore. But Israel, the Israelis are are one of these global. Uh, they're just a cancer. Uh, I, I don't see what else to say about it. They, they don't. They claim, and this is the interesting thing about this the, the second article link I have for you, they claim that it's supposed to be going after, uh, what was it, the uh, criminals and terrorists. Now, I want you to think about this on a, on a global scale and what, they're, what we're really being told about this point. In a way, part of it, okay, so there's a hack, another hacker out there. But that it's focused in uh, in the Israelis, and uh, they're now promoting uh, that they can scrape information. And we see all this technology that, that can be synthesized now. And Israelis are part of that F, uh, the, the so-called scientists that were put, making up this DNA, the synthetic DNA, years and years ago, uh, to make essentially make up IDs. 
make up things and then attach them to people. And you, you know, I'm not going to talk to it. I'm probably not going to talk about unless some special thing comes up like this pedophilia Epstein thing. I've talked to you about the pedophilia thing for years. And it doesn't matter to me whose name now gets attached to it. I told you it was big. I didn't really know how big at the time. But I did predict the Saville gone under Britain, all that. I don't even want to talk about that myself. I'm not fascinated by the stuff right, the caucusocracy being exposed at that for that reason. Only if it can bring a justice, which I'm not sure is happening. It's always a political thing. But more to expose how we get taken down. And it may be more grandiose at that level, but it's still how it works uh, the pressures that come in locally to fabricate, I mean, all this stuff starts and gets controlled at, at many levels. So it's not just in the upper crust that uh, someone can be bought, uh, but any, or you can be interfered with, if nothing else. But uh, what is their statement on these Israelis that are hackers? An Israeli firm uh, that can scrape all the data off the claim that they can do this. They, they come back and they want to tell you something. Uh, the, there is a fundamental, this is what they say, this NSO that did it, the, the fundamental misunderstanding of NSO, its services and technology. NSO's products do not provide the type of collection capabilities and access to cloud application services or infrastructure as listed and suggested in the Today's FT article, says a NSO spokeswoman, adding that NSO products were designed to target terrorists and criminals who coordinate over encrypted technologies. Now, however, however so much misunderstood the writing was, they have targeted, they're targeting terrorists and criminals who use encrypted technology. Folks, every time you connect up to, uh, to the Internet or HTTPS, it's encrypted, folks. Remember, if you've forgotten, and, uh, if you're, unless, it's coming to you, unless it's coming to your mind, I'm not going to remind you, remember... When the P-A-T-I-R-O-T Act came into play, it made you all, that made a misdemeanor, a terrorist. And then they modified it, and they took away the, they took away the misdemeanor requirement to be a criminal, and they just deemed you to be an enemy combatant terrorist. And so, to me, that NSO statement is quite telling that the world allows an Israeli firm, an occupier over some other people's lives, to telegraph what they'll do to you, to make a statement like this, that they're only out targeting terrorists and criminals when folks in the United States of America have no, nowhere else, you is a terrorist and a criminal. And if you don't know that, you really need to listen behind what you a lot more, and then I can show you as we go through how to go find and prove that out. What do I talk about? The murder memo, folks. This is, let's go to the first one. You go there. What is the murder memo? Yes. Well, that was that discussion that we had, and you have to go way back in the in the archives to find the where I talk about it. And I think it was 2012 that it finally got let out from 2010 that an attorney, another bar member, justified indefinite detention without due process, kicking the judiciary to the curb. Uh, didn't care about Congress because Congress gave him the the the, the permission uh, that executive expedience would rule the day and contrary to all norms, international norms, international law, and and everything, and, and, and leaving the law of war, folks. So when they make this little statement that they're only targeting terrorists and criminals and you all are using HTTPS, you all are being scrutinized and they're not joking about what they can scrape. And I want to read, the, here's the qualifier that they go on to say. You have to, again, just look at what they're saying and quali and put it in its proper place. Don't make it up. Don't make up stuff. Just apply what the, is, is the condition of today, and you'll see what they're saying. Our products are licensed to small scale, in small scale, to legitimate government intelligence and law enforcement agencies for the sole purpose of preventing and investigating serious crime, including terrorism, she said. Folks, when you're presumed to be enemy combatants, that's not a limitation. Legitimate government intelligence doesn't exist, remember? Yeah, in fact, what I say, it has no real test and standard anymore. There's nothing illegitimate about government intelligence when you're the terrorist. 
in so very telling uh, yes they can scrape all this so continue to use the use the systems that they're offering continue to use that that cloud with the uh, with the man looking out after they're telling you they can go in and they can scrape all this information, if they can get in and scrape information, they can get in and load information. And one day that you're uh, you're looked at, you've got an evidence that says you shows you're sitting on a park bench, uh, doing something that they want to catch you on, and uh, maybe then you have the evidence on your hard drive because they were able to put that in there too and collage, create a, an environment and an, a, a proof uh, that you cannot defeat. You didn't even know it existed because they came creeping in. Through an ad that you were watching on Google, have they been taking your voice uh, off your microphone? Is that is that is that fear porn here, folks? No, it's the technology is here. They're telling us it's happening. I don't even know what to say. I'm just my mind just starts goes blank. I said that. What what's going What does it mean to many people? Most people will say, "Oh, I don't do anything anyway," and you don't understand. The threat, but if you're saying that, you're likely not actually engaged with actually trying to stop any of this stuff. And then I have to wonder about us as a people: why aren't we stopping this stuff? I mean, these heartless people in the world uh, are just have just the, the global caucusocracy. Those that are allowed to commit crimes against everyone continue to do it. No one says anything in particular, and uh, you wonder why we then why complain about people like Palestinians? Why complain about the migrant? Why even complain about the children, folks? Who cares? You don't want to stop the top that's causing it, and it rolls downhill, folks. I don't know what more to say. What's the complaint? But these, these heartless people in the, are running the world. There's no check and balance. And one thing crossed my mind. It got kind of creepy for me uh, when I saw this. Always it comes in a neat, neat package. Then you start applying how it actually starts working in the world. People with means and with motive come after to do things. Scientists develop a beating human heart from stem cells. Scientists develop a beating human heart from stem cells. What can be wrong with that, folks? It can help people with need hearts. And at that point, at that level, I think that's great. But what if you're somebody that they want to get information from and you develop a heart problem? What if you develop any organ problem? What if you have a life sentence and they want to, someone really wants it out for you? What if some real vindictive, heartless entity wants to keep you in pain for a long time and your weakness is your heart and they decide they're just going to build you a new one? Is this getting too creepy? Is that me getting too creepy on myself for you all? You think that's not possible? Oh, it can't happen? We're making parts. I think that's great. You can go ahead and get your own parts that you need, and that's in your control. And then it's not really in your control either, though, right? Because you have to re rely on someone who will do it. But I'm always noticing that it doesn't seem to go and stay. There's always the good spot that works, and it keeps everybody thinking that there's a good reason for it. Behind the scenes, what you don't really hear about is how it can be used against us. And I'm asking us to understand this, these conditions, this is just one of thousands of looking down the road on the real things that start to happen over time. They like, look, everyone wants to complain about 5G but doesn't want to address it correctly. Or your smart meters. They'll complain, uh, they'll have their rallies, but they don't want to address it correctly. I don't get that part. And uh, why is that? Oh, you just you find some things that you don't like. Your mind says it's radiation. Uh, okay, fine. But you look and you keep going down the step, and it's a plan, folks. It's a plan with an outcome. It's not just about giving you disease. And so I don't, I mean, there's a whole lot more down the road. It's why in 2013 we did the lawsuit we did and not the one that we focused on in the start of it against the miners. I didn't, I told you, this is the thing, you, the subtlety you really have to understand. We didn't sue because there was a moratorium on mining. That was part of it, but that wasn't the main thrust. It was the funds that were being used to subvert how your way of life is supposed to actually be. That's a totally different issue. And so this is the, you have to look down the road. You have to look at the cause or try to find the cause and not what the effect. 
neural implant sends camera feed into blind people's brains. This is great. What's the problem? Well, have you heard about Elon Musk is going to have that brain implant type thing, his integration? Or maybe you'll have all this other thing going on when they implant it. They'll have the ability that sends a feed somewhere else. Maybe these Israeli firms can hack that. Maybe everybody who starts to get this because it's so cool. Google Glass, folks, because it's so cool. Isn't there a movie about this? I mean, somebody, you can't, everybody looking at you and they're all getting feeds from everyone's eyeballs? Everybody's going to hand their brain over to some AI, no less? It's programmed by fallen, fallen people for fallen purposes. Great, great. Given vision to blind people? Absolutely fantastic. Tapping into that to come after you? Maybe not so much. I would read the stories. I mean, they're fascinating, but you can read. You can read probably faster than I could read. You can find what's more important when you read yourself and you go to the, you know, you go to your the content links. You can see what they're talking about, and you can get your own impression. That's what I really want you to do. It's partly why I don't talk too much about reading these stories. Uh, just to let you know, for those of you that do have a problem, it's a, in the test provisions right now, uh, and the and they say the. The quality is uh, only as good as maybe a security, a 1970s security camera. But it is, uh, it is even that much for a blind, blind man or woman. I think that's pretty cool. But again, this is uh, when they're talking about tapping into all these things, integrating with the so-called cloud that can now be hacked by the Israelis for whatever nefarious reasons they want to do in their global oppression. Uh, you, listen, you, you can't disregard the fact somehow Fifi has is being fed very nicely by the owner and what looks to be a poodle on a leash is actually controlling the master because of the affections afflictions more like it so fascinating technology all right we can build build a beating heart now great and we can also do let blind people see but the problem is we don't seem to find that it, when it finally comes out that can't be used in a negative way. So I guess I think about this. this is the, they're actually encroaching on the nature. See, the, the so-called virtual is already in control. They're just figuring out ways to well, hack it, essentially, and how to implement, take you. They're going to try and get you to be connected up to this thing it's hackable, controllable, and editable. So, here you have these blind people can see. Great. Technology will come along. What's to stop them from building a transceiver that they can actually see? Everybody, whatever a blind man, a blind woman now can see. Everyone, actually, the world can see. That's some database. Getting more video, no more angles. See, you get, they get, they figure out where these people are, which they'll be able to do, and they're going to look at you, and then they build a model inside a computer, and they can do anything they start wanting to do now, but to put you in a place, if they want it. Most of society won't be there, but this technology is going to get so simple that you're going to have just any cop on the street being able to use it, aren't we? We already have it that way. Now, so with the eyes, uh, here we have uh, blind people can see, uh, surveillance cameras can actually be a tool uh, to debunk false theories. And this is the kind of thing I appreciate. Again, this is more the observation, and you've got a theory that should be tested, and science should be testing, it should be real science, and all the years it goes on before, while it's not, with all the uh, policies that are put on that are never tested, that are called to be best science, and they're all political frauds, we have a, somewhat of another one, and uh, this speaks to us as people and our us as societies. I'm going to assume this is a gen, people in general around the world, but the uh, the eyes that can see they show us when they look at public spaces that the surveillance cameras can debunk the bystander effect. The bystander effect was a was developed back in the 60s, I believe, and it was a phenomenon which was 
have been replicated in scores of subsequent psychological studies, the bystander effect holds that the reason people don't intervene is because we look at one another, we look to one another. The presence of many bystanders diffuses our own sense of personal responsibility, leading people to essentially do nothing and wait for someone else to jump in. Now, I don't know about you. Uh, I don't know about what to say. It's more like if I get into my fireman capacity, I'm always running at the fire. Don't ask me why. I just tend to do that. Uh, so that's the kind of thing I'm thinking of, the, of this when I, when I read this. But see, in the 1960s, they were putting out psych- called psychologists. These are, again, these are frauds to begin with as well. Uh, they were putting out that you wouldn't w- wouldn't be functional when there's a harm uh, around you. You wouldn't help. Uh, that's a pro. You can see right by this too. That was a programming that was programming people to be ineffectual. In fact, our nature uh, you'll see when you read this, our nature is to be helpful. So we're better. We're actually better people than we've been told by so-called psychologists. Experts say again are shown wrong by having an objective eye looking down on uh, public spaces to find uh, people reanalyze what's going on. So in a way, we can I could say, okay, so when we get to see stuff, we get to see good stuff, but why then does the system uh, make claims of bad stuff? And why are they inter- interested in making, editing, and adjusting reality? And when I look at the implementation of all these different dimensional attacks against us, uh, it, it doesn't go in a good way. It's not used for good purposes. And if we don't get a handle on this stuff and use this kind of a study, see, we can use this kind of a study to actually stop those cameras. Now that the camera and the study has been done, unless there's a secondary study, if you want to talk about what, we can talk about the best science. Is the best science right now, study, study says we don't need those cameras because we're going to take care of each other. And so if you start understanding what I'm saying here, start understanding how to take this this uh, information and start to put it into effect in those places that are going to start putting these cameras in or these police systems that are going to be using uh, these things saying that there's harm out there. Yeah, there's harm. There's no guarantee the cameras won't stop it. Someone viewing that won't stop it. In fact, we have plenty of evidence that someone behind the camera might be perpetrating it. So you have to have your bullet point list on the real on the ramif- real ramifications of what's going on. I was interested to see. I'm always interested to see how you know people make uh, suggestions on uh, what they think reality is, and and it's tested, and we find out that that that's wrong. And a lot of times it's wrong. I told you last week when I say dark matter doesn't exist, but people make lots of money around it. It's sort of like this quantum stuff. But I'm not sold on all that yet, folks. I have other my observations and my experience shows me there's an alternative. I'm talking about alternative dispute resolution. I have an alternative view about why we see certain things the way we are that appear to be kind of ooey ooh, but it's actually invention. It is it, it, Michael Mann made climate change is all like someone made quantum physics, and I'm no, I'm looking at material science saying well, we have a better resolu- we have a better sensor now in the resolution of the active uh, in the active in the action of a material. This dark matter just proves they can't find it. And it's proving their theories about our sin, our create the creation of our universe is improper. But as long as they keep the, the the facade, you you believe that they've got it understood, and that best science is what ru- runs the day on you. So psychologists have a hold, psychiatrists have a hold. They're all just licensees of a government. They're not going to go far. And so they set up this bystander effect as a, to me, in my mind, when I was seeing all this stuff, and as we walk through, they set up as a psychological programming of people as we go through years and societies that uh, that uh, seat to decision will rely on, and best sciences is all bunk. It really isn't reality. And guess what? We don't make good witnesses on top of it all. So here, how would we even start to begin with this? We begin believing these people. But we do, and it's taken all these years in order to have someone look at a video over time and do their study, and I don't even know if the study was done as completely as it could be. They explain how they did it. Sound good enough for me. They took some, they looked at, if you will, units of people interacting, and they put a quantitative and a, a title on what that meant to, with, within the reaction, and they found they came out to a better conclusion that, no, folks, you're better than that. You're better than what the what the experts say. And I say, good, we need, I think we need more of that. And I'm saying you're better, uh, listen, there's a, so the bystander effect. You're bystanding 
while you complain of a harm that you can identify and well, probably the cause for it and you're bystander to it not jumping in to help yourselves against that threat or those similarly situated being harmed and so there's now for me there's no excuse for the bystander effect I see in society everyone's just complaining and moaning of the of the crime against them and not jumping in to defend themselves or uh, one that they see being attacked we're better than that the psychologist was wrong all right all these uh, the head bump feeling type you know characteristic so-called science is flawed we just come up with the next new uh, head bump psychological connections in order to vilify people prejudice them whatever we want to do We've, we're really good at doing that and uh, part of that has to stop I, I suppose or not I guess or not because we could just be the hive and the Borg that they're they've actually programmed into us that we're allowing because we are actually disproving that psychologist uh, we're actually disproving that re recent study about the error and we're proving the psych original psychologists uh, determination that you would just stand by. Now, a study, a science, an investigation said that's not true, but see, we all stand by. That 1960s propaganda was very effective, as far as I can see right now. But they use all this stuff that they want to make up in order to become an authority. It makes it a be always the best science coming home. I mean, like in the 30s, it was if you felt a certain knot on your head, you could be deemed to be a, a criminal. You're mentally insane, you be thrown into into a mental ward. All right, this is what the kind of technology we have going on again. It's like this is all repeating itself, and so it's coming on. When you put take some not somebody to stop being a bystander, and to get in, engaged, and I say evolutionary, but uh, the you need you need to assess the danger, whether to you or someone else and engage it so that you can stop those that will create conditions and systems to harm you or someone else. When you see it, you look ahead. This is what I try to do behind the woodshed. I look to the future. You're being, you're being told about the future if you continue the path that you have been, and I'm here to try and correct that in you. How's that? So I'm asking you to be me and correct that in others, actually, in the ones that are oppressing us. I can only, I can only do so much to tell you, and then I can only do so much during the week in order to do what we do, but when someone stepped up and countered this this nonsense of profiling, essentially, by these various unproven characteristics, it can cause the change we need. And here's some evidence. It's not a man or a woman. It happens to be an organization. Okay, you know, some people were inside it to do this. I don't know their politics. I don't know anything about it, just the title. And then the story, you can read the story. The police drop Experian profiling tool following Big Brother Watch Expose. Big Brother Watch is this organization that pulled it out, uh, found out that over a, a, long, a somewhat long-term study, a year on from Big Brother Watch's investigation in Durham police uses of Experian's mosaic, mosaic big data profiling tool, for AI custody decisions, Big Brother Watch discovered through a long freedom of information battle. Look how long it, you know, again, it takes time and it takes perseverance and it takes dedication and engagement here. A battle, uh, the freedom of information battle with the Durham police heated calls to drop the discriminatory tool less than three weeks after their expose. Now, there's more to the story. The point is that it took someone looking at this. No, this is an organization, but you can do this on yourself. You can do this in your spare time. On something that you just cannot, you don't can't exi believe exists and needs to be stopped. The police. Now, the, the question I have is what, how long they're going to drop it, and for what. This is where I keep now telling you you have to do the next step. You push against this. You do your freedom of information. You do your investigation. You can do this all by yourself in the freedom of your own kitchen. However you want to do this on your own time, you keep plugging away, keep plugging away, and you be the one that brings up the pressure. And once they capitulate, you then move in and you then move the the jurisdictions relative to if it's the police or the city council or whatever, you move them into making policy that they'll never be used. Because once they capitulate, they real, you realize it's just they're just trying to they're profiling people, which is unlawful, and essentially it's no different than feeling the knots on people's head, and this time now they're using your face. 
And so you, you have to start engaging these. Otherwise, these systems, if Big Brother Watch hadn't done this test, and to whatever success it is or isn't, it's gotten this far where they've at least, uh, they're dropping it right now because it's under scrutiny. This is another problem. This is why I see a problem with this. These This uh, amoeba, this parasitic amoeba, again, when you're watching it, it's like Schrodinger's kitty. When you're watching it, it's, it, it turns, it dies. It just decides it's going to back up and go back in the shadows. When you don't watch it, it, it's, it lives. Well, they live, folks. It lives. Okay, so this is how this is quantum <laughs> quantum government. Uh, this is how the problem is. But So that's why when you get it to capitulate, you've proven the point of the harm. You then move for the policy, folks. And so it's not over just because you, you've got them to capitulate. There's even one more step, but I don't want to discourage you. Not that it's hard. It's just there's another step before that, and that's a probably a systemic memory problem. So you got this policy, but it can be changed. So then you have to do it. I, I would think more that move it from policy to law, ordinance, or whatever statute that that is a mandate upon the actors in the government. And I, I suggest, and this is what we try to do uh, for us. It, you know the subject matter well enough when you get to that level. You put the reason why it has to be there right in the ordinance. You, you preface the ordinance with the clause saying why you have to do this change. And in this case, let's say just off the top of my head, relative to stopping a profiling tool, you say it essentially just like that, to, pro, to prohibit profiling, comma. You will no longer, you will never use a facial recognition or profiling things, whatever the uh, the tool is, these tools, you generically define them. So that's the third step. Uh, it's a little bit more work, but it's still part and parcel to the war and, and winning. And when you get it set up like that, when the future, so-called future generations come and they see the clause requ of requirement before the ordinance, It'll be harder to change the, that in the future, given the society, the people looking on, can now see, well, this was to stop profiling. And then they get to say to themselves, it's not so hard to see, well, we don't want profiling, even in the future generations. And so you don't have that kind of provision. It seems to me it's easier for, for future psychopaths to subvert, as they have been over the last 40 or 50 years. And again, psychologically setting up society for the takedown all these years, saying that, you, you know, this by, you know, you may not have studied the bystander effect. You may have heard about it. It just sits there in our psyche to actually work work on us, is I guess. And there's lots of them. And anyway, so here here we have a, someone stepped up, folks, and took someone to step up on this uh, surveillance nonsense and to stop a mosa mosaic. Folks, you have to understand that this mosaic word is the is the part of the agenda. They have they have mosaics in in the public land issues as well and land use. So this is a very critical word as well. They, they're treating you as a territory, and they're treating you as a in this case a harm within that territory. In other ways, I mean, just the point is is that it's not what you see these they're naming these things this way for a reason. It's all part. Uh, in this case, would be the technocratic part of that. Again, data acquisition, data analysis, and then policy making based on that, and or decisions made without due process. The bureau rats, you know, techn techno rats. Okay, so again, moving on, uh, we go on and on and on about how this is right here in our face, folks. I don't know what to do because uh, here we have surveillance, and they use it for the wrong purposes, and they take wrong ideas and policies are already in government based on this so-called bystander effect, which what does what? It then empowers the cops to come in. Community care, doesn't it? Because no one cares. You can actually, I mean, it would be a little bit longer stretch to go, but you could take, well, listen, we have a study now that says we don't not care. We actually do care. You don't need the community care. We'll do it for ourselves. We don't need this provision that you're that of community care because we don't say it, but they're using it in order to bust your front door down and shoot you. And it sounded like a good idea underneath the old old philosophy, but we're finding out those were those were wrong and in error. And we start to promote that. And if you any of you that listened to the to the uh, video that I sent you to last week, uh, relative to the speaking that was done in Washington D.C. with uh, someone that we're working with, uh, the policies that they're developing coming from what we do, 
uh, were integrated with how that works, you'll have seen uh, certain conditions and statements being made that would address this just this way. They're flawed. These things that have come on us are flawed. Call them out. But have a plan on how it works better. And I suggest that plan to make it work better is found right now in the black and white of the past that w that was bef just before the time of the you know, oppression and the insurrection against our laws that caused this. That takes another slight study as well to find out where do you jump in with the with the law. And it, it was easy for them for me on the mining law because the mining law is so long ago that it's it just precedes every, just about everything. And it just so happened even the, uh, the the Civil War change, right? So that's what I kind of tell you about. It kind of solved that one made it easy. It kind of solved. So then so I'll suggest to you those when you're looking back far enough. Actually, if you look all the way back to what I'm talking about there, you'll see a lot of the needs of your life are built into this mining law. And you can pull those forward. That's your ingress and egress, your water, folks, as we keep talking about how bad it is now, uh, your land, your rights to it, not with your mind on it, but what the law was for the law of the land as disposed, not as it's been adulterated in commerce and value added underneath and determined to be a, a lesser estate than fee simple but a real property which is always land held less than fee simple and you, you some of you have sent me emails have shown me you said well i don't our paperwork says that we're what was it we're tenants that's right see that's what they did that's what i've told you about uh, those of you that'll pay attention you're you, you've been deemed a tenant but that's not the truth and that was done on escrow papers typically and so that can be either fixed or you just you reassert the document from the patent and you give your chain of title to it. That's what that so-called patent process is. Now, I've, I've, I've been able to, those of you that have, that should, you should do that. But I've found for expedience as well, to, to justice, you can refer to the to your lineage as an assignee and uh, as an affidavit is an evidence to show your current status outside. And that will that will work and where that, to the point where if it's not rebutted, it stands, the court has no right to come in, so it stands until it's rebutted, but the rebuttal comes in a challenge that you would then uh, ask the court if it's need uh, for time to get the evidence, and that would then be going through the process, the, what we used to talk about, the uh, patent uh, the patent process, where you go ahead and use the public notice statutes in order to notice uh, put public notice at the at the courthouse or wherever your state says to go do it for the length of time the evidence of your of your chain of title now, i won't go through all that but so the point is i've just given you a nugget for those of you paying attention i know it went fast and i kind of came to you on a, on, a, on a just a surprise there but when you understand some of this dynamic here you can prepare your future about even when you've had a an error in the paperwork or you you appears you took less than how you thought you were taking it, and so anyway, there's so there's a, a way to go through this, a point after point uh, that brings your records back in. And one of the big problems right now in the mining community is an acceptance. Thousands and thousands of people are accepting a non-lawful, non-existent condition as fact and allowing an authority to make a decision on that. It just a, seems to be a natural thing we all do. No one takes a step back and says, okay, I've got, some, I've got a record that's a problem, and I'm being mistreated and mischaracterized and defamed by it. How do I fix that part? And it's really not that hard. It just, you just got to spend a time and attention on that. And so this is what uh, seems to be a natural consequence, that uh, we get all this, you know, we start accepting all this this, this in this case, before the mosaic, the head, you know, essentially your face becomes a bunch of bumps on the top of your head. All of a sudden you have a proclivity to be some criminal or, or they want to now use this stuff in order to keep you out of some place. It's all fabricated. You, you have to, again, that record has to be made correct. You have to just take the time it takes to make the more correct record and then you move from there. And it's not, it's not that difficult when you see how to do this, but so where does this start going when they start to get presumptive? Remember, this whole this whole thing runs punitively without due process. And they they suck you into these things on the needs that you have, on the so-called benefits they're giving. And now I'm going to talk about it, uh, the education system. Now, I don't think that I, I suffered much from it myself. 
Now, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't benefit as far as I could because of some political things that happened. In other words, I'll just let's see, keep that less, less esoteric. What was it called? Um, affirmative action. Yeah. By the time I got to go on, and I was looking for ways to go through colleges and stuff, and I got through some, but not all. Uh, I was being defeated by the very feminist movement and affirmative action uh, that defeated others, just like myself, in preference to people that were uh, apparently distinguishable, but not as a dis- as a di- as a as a prejudice to them. And so I, I didn't go that I didn't get that benefit from the system. I don't necessarily condemn what we knew before as education. I certainly see the failure today, especially with all these new policies. Since '71, then I, I've been I can show anybody can go look to find a book that, that was published before '71 and after. You can see the knowledge was sucked out of the 1971 books or '72 books, and uh, then it's degraded from there. That the new policies came in. That now the system here is a really just a control grid that we you know anybody again. I'm talking to you singing to a choir, but I wanted to point out it's the same methodology of approach. They take something you need, they say they're providing an education, and they mandate. You think vaccines are bad. Man, they mandated education. And then they adulterated that. They have their own squalene inside the education system. Now it starts to turn in order to make stuff up, and they do this and they continue to do it, and they can tell that it's being made up this way, that consistent with the agenda because it never really conforms with the law. And these people are told it doesn't, but they continue. This situation with surveillance and control and bringing up uh, the ability of a of an executive enforcement punitively without due process comes directly now here to affect you through the children and the rights of child and all this other uh, international nonsense. And the school district warns parents there's kids could be taken away over unpaid lunches. No, I don't, I don't even know what, what more to say. The school district warns the custodial agent of a little goat that they could be taken. The little goat could be taken away for unpaid lunches. It was uh, I don't know how much. I mean, I could be shocked, but I know it's, it's coming, folks. This is just the method. They're going after your kids, your little goats, uh, they don't recognize your mother and a father, they recognize that they're taking care of them being a benefit that you put them in, and now they're threatening you if you don't pay their lunches. If you read through the story, you find out they're just now going to start paid lunches or, or um, for people who can't afford it next year. They've been told in this district uh, that well, the district said you're going to take your child and we're going to put them in foster care. What did I told you about that system, folks? This is just a... You want to talk about Epstein's jet? Here's one of them right here. Now, they then were told, this district was told, you really can't do it like that. And so they adjusted and they said it again. Then they capitulated and they sent back a new notice that says, okay, we're going to do a little differently. The point is, the point of capitulation is when these people that have their, their sons and daughters are now threatened with, with abduction need to go directly, forget the, the school meetings, you go right directly to the administration of the, of the district, and you say, you fix that policy right now. Stop threatening uh, 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 my, my son and daughter. Do not extort from me by the color of education the property of my son and daughter. Do not coerce from me. These are felonies. If you go look at state law, you just have to learn more and more and better how to bring the imposition out as a crime immediately. You just don't complain and object just by a phone call or even a letter. You have to make it more of a record-based thing that they start to figure out you're going to take action. And it'd be, it could be judicial or it could be a combination of official and private. Because again, it doesn't matter that they're under the color of authority. That color of authority can it is where the felony starts. That's why I tell you, try to find a, uh, an authority that's being used, the color of authority being used to harm you or others. That brings that official action, that the color of official action, even if it's just a contract. Uh, it doesn't have to be official like government. It can be an authority being relied upon that does not warrant the action that's gone on or subsequent actions underneath the color. And so I don't, I don't even know. We can go through the analysis on this, but it doesn't matter to you all if you're not interested. 
So I just point this stuff out. Here's news to us that the governmental officials, uh, particularly the, the school districts, this is in Pennsylvania, are willing to threaten you for your uh, uh, with abduction of your kids to get cash. Something that also can be attacked in here. It's just a fiction, right? And they, again, they did it punitively without actual notice. And then they did it also, actually, it's not under, correct under the law. If they have a debt they have to come after, they're supposed to go through a court and supposed to get a judgment. They do say now, they didn't say they're going to go through court, but they do say they're going to go attach liens on property. I don't know the authority for that either. Not directly. But this is what, what's in the government, that if you keep standing by, and you, do, and you may dislike it, but if you do nothing more but just dislike it and even collect up a bunch of people to get together to rally up and continue to protest, it's not going to be enough. They work out, see this is just a dynamic that's being worked out, what is being resisted, how it's being resisted, and the parts that aren't resisted or they can make a plausible attack through that, they will take that. So you're training, and this is what I learned early on, decades ago, you're training the system to defeat you in most normal cases. And I say that, boy, that should, some people that have been dealing with you say, well, then what do we do? You should have come to and said, well, what do I do? That's the big deal. You start to have to realize that there's a, when I talk about subtle approaches and evolutionary engagement, that's no joke. You, you will learn, you, and you have to almost have to see this, where you do something and you, you start finding that the system reacts to what you did. And they do it in a more proper sense. They, now you start realizing they're, they're throwing, they're running you into a box canyon with it, and they're going to prevail. They're the occupier. They're going to prevail. So you have to learn how not to train them to defeat you. And part of that, and part of the answer is to look ahead and look at the black and white and start to do the things I've suggested about putting the improper actions up front as a crime so that the, they're more hesitant to try and figure stuff out. They become under more, it's the lights shine on them in a proper way, the ra roach that they are. And they it, it seems to kind of cause a problem for them. And I think it would because, again, if they realize that what they're doing under color is a felony, anything next that they do, you can call it out. See, that's how simple that becomes. But anyway, a serious situation here. If you don't have un uh, in a country of a plenty, folks, this is the other thing I keep telling you. In a country that will allow toxic debt and allow all the crime it does under the monetary system and the fiscal system, that we still have this problem in this country is really a crime to begin with. That they always put the cart before the horse is an interesting problem, but more importantly, that they attack their own, the, the people that they're supposed to be serving in a community that's supposed to aspire and grow and, and get into good things, that they would attack themselves with methods that are not, not even legal. In the first response, you have, you really have to take note of that dynamic because that's what we're living in. How it gets to the point where a school district actually threatens to abduct sons and daughters for no, not for unpaid lunches is really a fascination to me at one level. And we essentially we don't like it, but we don't do enough to stop it. And we're really and I I have a sense that we're we're not maybe we're getting close to not capable. No, and I mean, I mean, talking about we just don't have the knowledge in us anymore. Not, not even that we've been programmed. I'm saying there's just not that knowledge. The people I talk with, even the ones that I I talk with that we know, we're having to make sure that we're always adjusting that we know. And that's always doing trying to find objective tests within what we do to balance up against it, uh, to give us a test to make sure that we are still within the objective basis that we're supposed to be. It's not like I read in the past when people wrote stuff and it's just like you, you can sense the the innate knowledge of the world in them coming out. But I don't see much of that anymore. Anyway, so keep going. Uh, city, you know, okay, so I've told you a long time ago, uh, you got to jump, don't protest in the streets. I guess that's okay. But you can learn how to do that. That You can learn about all that and do that. It's okay. Uh, you can, I guess, do like what the, the French are doing. That That's cool, but okay, 35 weeks and they're still not walking into the buildings uh, i don't know why why this works i don't know french law and all that either so i don't know what the restriction is but i'm talking about the french revolution and all this stuff that goes on uh, okay you see how long it takes to go really uh, much not much of anywhere relative to at least what i can see should be done and that's over france not here so i shouldn't even 
I have no really basis on what they intend for themselves. But but here, I told you, you jump in because there's systems and checks and balances. They're sitting there. They're they're ignored, but they're not also not being function. They don't function because you don't bring them. And uh, when you start to do that, uh, things start to be adjusted. Like I told you, we were uh, before. It sounded like there was a county that had balked on what it was uh, saying it was doing, uh, underneath the understandings that we thought we were giving to them, and then they agreed that they really weren't uh, so-called paying attention. They were being influenced by another group of people that were wrong. And I said that caught them since 2014. That came back to bite them. Uh, the point was they got caught on that record, and they we found out that they could be two-faced, right in our face, right? This is the problem. Uh, for reasons I don't even understand, folks. Why do you do that? But they did just enough in order that they didn't re uh, reap the whirlwind during the times they had to do certain uh, certain things. And that was another point about being there. So you got to be there to, 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 in the proper way to, to be the witness because that's a guilt trip on them as well. You just standing there with the right stuff is a guilt trip. So why, notwithstanding that they had a, the, the problem, the glitch in the matrix, so to speak, five years after being introduced to the information, that came back to bite them. And then they had to get real with it. Now, again, a criminal can smile and lie. These people smile and shake your hand and lie to you right in your face. And then they think it's okay. So we uh, we know that trick. So I think they know that we know that trick. And that's part of the other, other thing. That they don't want to be dealing with you. As I told my colleague, I said, to, he said, I said, what do they, when they don't want you to listen to you, how many minutes do they give you? He goes, well, normally we have five. I said, you better do what you have to say in three because they're going to cut you off. They don't want to have this record made. And that's what they they initially cut him to three minutes. So that's all predictable, folks. They did not want to hear what was coming for the record. But we had it refined so that he could put everything he needed in three minutes in the record. Well, just so happened, he elicited a, co a question from one of the commissioners. He ended up taking 20 minutes. So you can't do that unless you're there with the proper stuff and understanding how the dynamic works. That they don't want you in their face I've been telling you to go into the system, get inside the system, make your records uh, so that you can do that. Well, physically now, one city hall is using a facial recognition to blacklist and ban residents. All right, so if you have a debt, they're going to abduct your kids, your little goats. If you, if you have a face, uh, the mosaic of your face will be used to vilify you by the cops. Now, the cities are using this to blacklist and ban residents. You may not be, I told you this time was coming, you may not be able to get in there. You may not be able to get into these places unless they know all about you and what? All that information goes to the cloud, which is hackable, right? Hackable to be adjusted and edited. And all that video edited, all that sound edited by those that have that control. To what? To a small scale, legitimate government law enforcement, right? They told us in the prior story that this city hall thing is a real threat, although it may not look like it. You just say, oh, facial recognition to blacklist Ben. Who cares? I don't go down there anyway. That's one of our problems. But that they're doing that is an intimidation, and it's a, an improper association, isn't it? It's a tool that profiles. And so here we are again with government officials that are willing to go here into this condition in order to control what the action Inside now you have to. Why would they want to do that? Unless they have an agenda they're running, and they need to keep out the people that they would actually call them out on it. And so you say, well, how do you fight that? Uh, well, those of you that want to, most of you are saying, well, I don't go in there. Anymore. Who cares? Well, you can do it by, again, these record-making writ writings. It's not over just because they ban you, and this is what they'll find out if you if it gets to the point where you start uh, feeling. Like if they all of a sudden, well, they, would, they may not even tell you, but if you find out that they may be using facial recognition cameras, or even, well, I guess they have some security, but if they're attaching any so-called uh, AI onto it, uh, you can run a, an injunction to stop it, right? And you have you can read the list about what this uh, article, a mass private eye, uh, says, and maybe give you a lead on what your objections would be if you don't have a thought, but when they start, if they start to impose it in your area, and you move against it. Initially, and you have go ahead and move an injunction through to enjoin it for those reasons. And one of your main reasons, if you if they do that, you're not going to be engaging 
with the government and that'll take away your right to petition. It'll, uh, it'll take away your right of free association. It'll take away your ability to check the government, which is also inherently in your right. Whatever you might think or is or is not, you can still assert all that. And then all of a sudden it becomes relevant, doesn't it? And if you don't, then it's not. It's real simple. City Hall uses facial recognition to blacklist and ban citizens. Uh, if you have not been down to a local county meeting, well, maybe you should just to see see how they work. And, and that gives you information on how you have to approach certain things. It's why I know uh, about anticipating for my colleague what he thought was going to be a five-minute hearing. Was I said, do it in three. They have to give you at least three, so just do it. And it happens that way, folks. It's predictable. Why? Because of the dynamic. If you don't know the battlefield, you can't anticipate. If he walked in there with five minutes to say and he only got cut off in three and there was a buildup of information, his record would have been incomplete. As it was, he threw it at two and a half minutes. He threw in a condition that caught the, piqued the interest of one of the commissioners and there was a correlation that needed to be made that was interesting to the commissioner and that, that commissioner asked a question and that was like, it's time. All right, we got no, no obstruction now. We can go keep going until the question stopped. And so you understand that dynamic, you start building that into what you're going to say, what you're going to write, how you're going to respond. You anticipate responses that you're making up in your head in a way uh, to be able to, to be fluid in the condition. This evolutionary engagement, it's in the moment. If we prepared to be in that meeting, didn't know what the outcome is, that they wanted to, that they were going to force, but it was predictable. These people work in programmable ways. You can see it. This Boise City Council claimed that they needed facial recognition camera to, to protect public employees from disgruntled and unwelcome residents. Who likes government, folks? It's not disgruntled. I mean, this is unwelcome by what standard? See, there's a process that you could, they needed to go to the court. Particular people needed to be stopped. And then they had to show that they needed facial recognition to identify them on the way in, and that the system that exists, like phoning the sheriff to come in and execute, or the or the house of house of guards to come in and uh, to block him out, that's uh, whoever this unwelcome one was, justified by due process. All that can be put on this, as uh, as I say this to say to show the city may want something, these officials may want something, but it may not conform to the way this government is. It may be good for them to keep pushing the agenda. And I understand Idaho is not such a uh, neutral place anymore. It's not, and for our, our position, it's not so, not as uh, production oriented uh, as I would have thought. And yet, it doesn't matter. We, uh, Those of you that are there need to look at this and start getting engaged with how, how you address these uh, impositions that just get put in and pretty soon where the uh, you can tie in this last story, the uh, police dropped the uh, Asperian model, the equivalent of uh, feeling knobs on your head to profile you, with this point. And then you bring up the additional point of an opinion without a due process, a declaration judgment, declaratory judgment of any one, I guess, citizen. What do they say, resident? Oh, they say residents here, too. That's the other thing. The resident. What if you're not a resident, folks? Do they have a, is their AI pick between all that too? See, so there's a whole bunch of little things you can throw in on this that just start showing that that they want to make an on, a castle of safety is not in the cards. And there's no justification that that's good enough. In fact, I would actually turn that to a felony. That's If I could find that they're doing stuff behind the scenes, and it'd probably be easy because they're, if they're this way, they're probably also doing the agenda stuff, the sustainable stuff. I could just find one thing they're doing under color. I would say that that was being used to cover as a, under the color of, of authority of security are using their ability to obstruct people from actually accessing the government to stop them from their crime, of sust their sustainable crime. I'm pausing. Did you just go back a few minutes here and listen to what I just said? That's how you address these people. You take every action they do that's really, it's completely, I don't even go, you don't hear me talk about my First Amendment, Second Amendment, I just put it in the taunt, in the text. But I, I've created it as a felony. As soon as I can attach a harm they're doing that isn't really warranted by law, which none of the sustainable stuff is, I tie that action, those actions, to this thing they've done to obstruct me from catching them doing that. Now what have I done? I've hit them on three points. I've hit them that they're doing something wrong, 
what it is to get that in the public and that they're using stuff to cover that, which is really, I got three points and elements of depths that can be building on a RICO claim, couldn't I? If you understand how to pull this stuff together, it's not that hard. If you don't understand, follow what I just said the last three, four minutes. I know I went fast, but take down some notes and look at the way the objective basis structures the place, and you'll see it's all right there. I'm just, I don't make this stuff up. Well, I've had to train myself to see it, but it's there to see is the point. It's all written down. And City Hall wants you out. Uh, they call it City Hall. It could be any, could be county governments. This is a cancer that starts. This is someone pushing an idea that has no basis at all. Again, government agencies are told, it's like the education department, the school district before, they have are told over and over what they're doing is unlawful. And yet the, you'll look at the attorney for the district tried to make this segue, a, fall, a straw man argument about uh, about the, oh, these are debtor, you know, people who owe money are trying to use this to protect themselves. Well, that doesn't, it's irrelevant what he brought up as far as it being actually lawful. Yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's a segue. It's not on point. They, they're, to do law, it doesn't matter that someone doesn't pay. Uh, there's a, there's remedy for lack of payment, isn't there? So his opinion is irrelevant to that and the disregard of that. He's doing it just to call that out? Well, that's a public shaming. What, what's, they're not in the process of, they're not in the authority to do that. If they have a problem, uh, they did it without, they defamed them without a judgment, didn't they? See, I guess the point is, is you look at, you reframe what you see, they're, that they're using the words to actually reframe in the more proper context to nail them. And this is just, I'm just talking about here, the, this education system, if you have little ones that are being affected or the threat of abduction, these, this, these thoughts are across the country. And so you, that's just on education, this same thing, thing I'm telling you works, if you, if you could have heard me over time, I'm just applying the same things there on this subject matter as I've done on the mining and property laws and uh, rests and whatever. It's all the same. You look and reframe what they're doing in the, law, in the objective basis, not as they describe it. And so there's another built-in thing. That's the notice back to them, they can't, the reliance they can't take. So you start taking the stuff away, back away that they're stealing from you. So on the hook here, folks, people start looking for it. Some of you might want to jump in. Facial recognition is uh, they really want to be able to keep track of everybody. Pretty soon it's going to be in the eyes of blind people. They're going to keep track of you, looking at you, and you don't realize the guy can't see it because he's been blind from birth, but he got this new implant. And then he's got Elon Musk's little synthetic connection in there, and now they can all hear what's going on and see what's going on through those eyes and ears. The people that they're abusing and didn't know it, that come under the color of helping them. And the uh, walls of eyes and ears and everything, everybody's looking, uh, all able to go into the cloud and all being interfered with by people that are supposedly legitimate government. So, I, I, again, it's in front of us. What are we going to really, uh, really kind of do about that? A lot of people say nothing. Right, so I don't, it doesn't stop if you do nothing. And it doesn't stop if you continue making the excuse that you're looking to do something. There's enough, again, we're, there's no doubt what's going on. It's everywhere. I told you, like, all the mo modernization enactments were a crime against you a decade ago almost. Now. You know, I'm not talking hardly much any different now having to deal with it. And if you think this, uh, idea relative to feeling the bumps on your head has gone anywhere. We talked about this before. It's really not news. It's showing you that they, the government officials are applying all this nonsense and, and hoping something sticks that you miss. And the first thing you don't object to, they're going to use because it sticks when you don't clean it back off and then make an objection, uh, I mean a permanent obstruction actually, uh, to, to, the, to this thing. We're talking about the police utilizing these discussion, these things to fabricate and profile against people. They use your debt to profile you as a punitively harm you. Just go right after your kids now. What they have to do with that debt, I don't know. I mean, is this or any uh, And then the city hall wants to get your pictures to identify you as unwelcome. Yeah. So who's making that bureaucratic decision without due process is the point. And they 
Then you see this problem, getting back to your kids being taken away. CPS is taking kids away based on predictive analytics. Computer program to judge parents. Parents, again, look at this word. Parent is a, is a custodial agent of the state, if you had, didn't, haven't heard it before. CPS is taking kids away based on predictive analytics. How in any in a, in a nation of, of due process could that actually be functional? And yet it is. And so you have to look at why that can be functional. And and uh, the people that are moving this through again, they're for the mo uh, they're not going to like me to hit a blanket statement, but I'm going to I'm going to say it this way because I can't prove it otherwise. Every system I've looked at uses the same rule. It says all the way to Sweden that they use these to take your kids to stick them into us. Uh, child services like you would think adult services is uh, an adult service being on the street corner and then you see the you see the Epstein thing you see the Catholic Church thing predictive analytics this is no different than feeling the knobs on your head and calling you a mental case they're attaching that to mothers and fathers to steal away their kids their little goats your sons and daughters are the, the weapon that they're using against you all. And if you don't step up against it, you too can suffer this fate. The, the, there's, again, this predictive analytics. It's so-called AI. It's some fallen natured uh, programmer in behind thinking they can actually pull this off with if-then-else statements. Utilizing the psychology that we heard in the prior that says that you all can't care for yourself uh, and no one's brought up the fact, yeah, but that new survey says, but we do. And so maybe you're a lot less relevant. Can we start saying that for ourselves? Can we start protecting ourselves that way? Because if we don't, this, this nonsense is it's a horror. It's a terror. The, again, the terror is the war of terror against people, and they accept it. I don't know why. I haven't figured out why. They go to the very same agents that destroy them, uh, again, I did, I'm watching this thing in the mining community relative to a petition that went through asking for a, a federal authority, no less, to check a state authority that has no authority. If the feds were to do the right law, instead, the people asked to have the, the hurtins put on them and just be more lenient. When the hurtins that they're put on them are illegitimate to begin with. What is this psychosis? It's like, what is this? Wouldn't it much, isn't it much easier to look and say, well, all that doesn't apply. Therefore, the consequence of, that, of the application of that would all be wrong and is wrong. So how about if we just follow the black and white and stop doing the wrong thing in the first step? Isn't that really the best answer? So if that's the case, if you could agree with me, that if you just say there's a rule here that says it does not apply and cannot be applied, that you shouldn't, you better not apply it, because then you're going to be doing this felony thing. We keep finding out that's crime. If you're going to do, the, you're going to do the crime, you're going to have to do the time. Not me. You can't impose that crime on me. If you're going to make these impositions that are criminal, we have an accountability structure that's supposed to kick in here. Why is it not better to say, don't do that because you'll be a criminal? Don't impose on me this way. Don't trespass on my property because you'll be a criminal than it is to have an attorney come in and say, we would ask you, Mr. Criminal, to be more lenient on how you to perpetrate your crime. And I want to tell these your accessories in the state, these thugs over here, uh, take, off the, uh, the, take off the brass knuckles, would you please? But we do this whole thing, and we do this thing to ourselves all the time. We don't respond in the correct, correct way. We'd rather have uh, take our responsibility, hand it to someone else who will then, again, if it goes to an attorney, it's a torning in favor of what? The one that actually gives them their license, which is what? An agency of the state. I'm talking about a bar member. Now. And who doesn't in the system does not get advice and counsel, they call it, from a bar member. It is quite astonishing to see that this is the same advice that comes through the CPS. Remember, the Bar Association in their House Delegates Resolution says they will enforce international provisions of law. Remember, the Bar Association is the 
to the Holy See, that's the Vatican that we talk, talk about the violations coming out of there, that they say that they will impose international provisions. That includes the rights of child, notwithstanding any rights that men or women have in the United States of America, counter all that, and they will support and promote sustainable development. The very same things that use all of this as tools and weapons is the same guy that people rely upon, the same members that people rely upon to get the so-called answer to how to lift the pain that was improperly put onto him a little bit. It drives me. I just don't get it. I don't understand. Why would we do that? Well, we do it. Predictive anal and analytics. Yeah, well, that's what I do behind the woodshed. But I don't base it on someone's lumps on their head. I look at the perpetrator of crime, uh, the perpetrators of crime and their habits and customs of their operation and their integration with other gang members and their integration with other organizations and how they perpetrate the crime against you. We were required as a society to each one of us do what I just told you we were supposed to be doing and then bring accountability. Otherwise, we agree. That's the consent part. It's not that hard to figure out. And so a lot of this, again, is this, uh, this problem of the two, you know, one finger pointing out, three pointing back. We have, ob we have an obligation to ourselves. We have to learn better for ourselves, and we have to, more importantly, do better. Indeed. Indeed. Not what you say. Indeed. What's the, uh, at the end of the day, what did you accomplish? Well, I measured how many times I put the key down on my keyboard, and if you added up all the distances between a key press on the top where the key is level, when I press it down, if I was to accumulate and add up all the distances, I could go from here to the moon in an afternoon. Isn't that a great accomplishment? Well, not with respect to your rights and freedom and your expectations and, not be, and being left alone, if that's what you want, or being able to integrate in an honest manner with people and not have to th feel that you're being threatened by them because they got a costume on and then have uh, them know that they're not supposed to be threatening because that's really a felony that way and understand you as a your property rights at the how easily and quickly that's violated when you go look at the authority that's coming against you and you look as I've told you there's no judicial authority to interfere with you and there's no administrative authority that rises up to affect your rights that existed prior to their that government, that public document that was issued from that thing you asked for. I ask you again, why'd you do that? And where you didn't ask for one and you have an imposition, don't you have a couple bunch of felonies right there to begin with under color of authority attempting to take what's not theirs to take? Again, the government is limited. It's up to us to limit that. That we don't, that we allow ourselves into conditions of, of vulnerability in a way, is is not the blame of those that exploit us, is it? Now, it doesn't fare well on those that do exploit. What I'm saying is that we have a measure of accountability here that we always want to give to somebody else. And then we will allow them to do it wrong. Again, we'll, ask to, we'll put the lashings on me, but we're only asking you to put maybe half the pressure of the lashings. Where'd that come from? Again, it's not uh, involuntary servitude is the crime, not voluntary servitude. What did I say? 1980, uh, section 40, 1980, 42 U.S.C. 1981. You're asking for it here, folks. We have a measure of accountability ourselves, and I don't think that we're rising up to that at that point. And a lot of people don't want to hear this, but it doesn't matter. I don't know what to say. I, I don't know where to go. And now uh, here's a little story. To show you that it's kind of like a, it's really important. I don't know if, how much I can really pull out of this. I'm going to go through this uh, story. I've been trying to get to it for weeks and weeks and weeks to show us that we set ourselves up for the fall. We uh, allow ourselves vulnerabilities and what we, we talk ourselves out of our better sense. And we don't hold really fast in the condition. We want to deny that overpress, oppressive com condition that we're living under uh, for other reasons and give ourselves justification to drop our guard, if you will. And then put our foot, then slip on the banana peel we've now thrown down there, and it just happens that our foot slips down our, our in our mouth, and that's where we that's where we stand, one footed, hopping around with our foot in our mouth against an authority that has control, and we handed it to him. So here's a little report that kind of got me a bit. I want to go through this a little bit. It's indicative of the things that we should 
no better than to do what we do anyway. This is a story and a tale. I'm not going to condemn this author. It's really what goes on. It's what we all end up doing. It's it's the hard part of having to maintain what little bit of uh, freedom we have against a, an authority that really has no accountability. But as I start to understand, you can start, again, make that record for as feeble as it seems at the time. As I said, we were able to take a, and it is ignored as a record might be. In 2014, a record was made. In 2019, uh, the criminal was still there and it came back to bite him in the tail. And in a good, in a big, a bad way for them, a good way for us. So without the record, it would not have been, uh, well, we couldn't have, it would have just been a first notice. See, this is the point about these records. So uh, let me go through this and uh, let me see if I can do a, a bit of justice here to explain some things. Well, I guess uh, not in condemnation of the author, but to show he says himself he knew better. Now, about the amount he needed to know, I would have to give him a leeway, but he knew better at some level. And he wasn't unaware, and this is our, now that speaks to all of us. We're not unaware we have problems, and we're not unaware we're being treated the way we are. We're not unaware how this thing is coming down on us, but we are uh, also not unaware that we're standing there watching it and doing nothing about it. So then we capitulate on top of that. We give excuse. You'll hear that in this story. Pretty, pretty interesting. And we'll also see a, a threat on, you know, we talk about a constitutional thing that's supposed to be protected and it's being attacked. You have to take all this into consideration when you're looking at this dynamic of the world we live in, and particularly the United States of America, where there seems to be this this notion of, uh, well, I don't even know what the notion is anymore, about how, how good we all are or how much we condemn it, and still don't do anything on, on looking at the reality of what's going on relative to our approach. Now, I say that in general. The, someone like myself, I'm we're, I'm dealing with what I can deal with on the level I can deal with it, and uh, don't know what else. I really don't know what else to do. That's why I say, you thumbs down this broadcast. Go ahead. Doesn't really matter to me. Uh, at some level, it would matter a lot more if you would give me your comment about why. You know, we can have a difference of opinion. I'm not even really interested in the difference of opinion. I'd like to hear it, but uh, to hear nothing on a thumbs down or or even just a disregard or whatever becomes a serious disconnect. Because I have to wonder, I have my reasons I can articulate pretty clearly. And when I thumbs down somebody, it's on a very particular thing, most normally, if not a general idea. If I, for instance, a Twitter went through, someone was made a video, eh, generally okay on Las Vegas, the history that you'd, you know, maybe some of the history you don't know about in Las Vegas, made the statement it was making, then it came across and made a statement about royalties and mining. And they tried to blame Harry Reid uh, 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 because he had gold mines and they didn't pay royalties. Well, that just so happens to be a, one of the uh, one of the sticks that, that, that's been stuck in the spokes of people in their mind. It's a programming response. If you're going to go after Harry Reid, I'm not promoting him at all. He's a criminal. But uh, you, you don't use royalties. He just didn't pay for a gold mine, or his family has. Go read the mining law, and don't don't perpetrate bad information. Don't make it more difficult than it needs to be. This is what we tend to do. We take the easy way out. And so for someone like me, my objection was stated. Thumbs down, that's not where you go. If you wanted to get him, get him on something else. But don't go to royalties without researching what that, why you don't pay royalties. And maybe you'd find out that they tried royalties before the mining law. And they found out they utterly failed to do what they needed to do. So it's a good thing that Harry Reid's family doesn't pay money in royalties. But guess what? Royalties is that thing they're trying to put and promote in front of everybody. So in that video, I noticed whether it was whether I would put as much attribution to a, uh, propaganda or not relative to that. That was a bit of misinformation that continues the programmed response relative to this production that you would look at as a negative in your society instead of it's supposed to be a positive because that's how you all actually exist from the production of our raw materials in this country and what we can steal from others. How's that? Anyway, so here's the thing. I'm a journalist, but I didn't fully realize the terrible power of the U.S. border officials until they violated my rights and privacy. And boy, wasn't in that title a mouthful. A mouthful. So much to discuss on the surface of that. Of course, the, 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 
whether or not he actually didn't understand, he didn't fully realize. So he realized something here. So you can look in between the lines here. We know something's there. And now he realizes they're terrible powers. Since when did we go there when it was all supposed to be under law? And these are the things you have to start to analyze and say, maybe I'm not in the place I thought we was, uh, even over my objection to how bad it works. No, we're in an even worse place. They violated my rights and privacy. Maybe once you got to the terrible powers, maybe you didn't have any. But we're going to hear a little different tale as we read, uh, as I read through this. It's not just that he didn't have any. He didn't protect any. He didn't present any, actually. He didn't present the, fa the obstruction of them either in a record. He didn't do what I tell you all. And I'm, going to guess, I'm guilty of this because I've not contacted them myself, which would put you on a list anyway, but that's all part of the... Part of how you do the setup for the takedown on there for against them is I have not contacted the TSA on some future need to travel or through or through some border or, or the or the State Department through some border or across state lines no less or on a train or any of that stuff. I haven't contacted them myself, so I'm not even doing what I'm asking you all to do. But I don't have a plan to go anywhere. So I don't know, that's not a priority for me right at this point. Although I can tell you, I'm looking at what they do here. See, this is more info intel for me. How do they treat you? I don't have a clue. I don't travel. So how do they treat me? When I'm going to go through this, what do I expect? And in that regard, how would I set up the condition to counter what the, what's uh, so called supposedly violating my rights and privacy? There's no violation. You just didn't have them is the first point. But you doesn't mean that they you can recognize some, and then you make that record. And another thing we'll see, and I may or may not be able to get to it, there are so many points. Understand the technology that we're all wrapped up with that we, uh, I think, completely and stupidly uh, continue to carry about the country when we know, even though it may, and in this case, he didn't get the, he never got the bad treatment before, even though uh, we don't get the bad treatment, we know we could. Why do you carry a computer or a phone with information on it? Why don't you use it? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe someone has a better answer for it. Why don't you have a throwaway phone? Why do we set ourselves up for the takedown? Why do we make an issue? To me, that's a game. It's a puzzle. Let's go ahead and have our stuff. But you know what? When they type into my system, they're going to get a virus. They're going to have to go through a whole bunch of password. I'm going to have a script that they have to go through running the password. The password becomes one of these Google puzzles that you never solve. Go ahead, waste my time. I mean, why don't we get creative that way if, they're going to go, if we're going to go through it? But why do we have information? Why do we say stuff that incriminates us and gives the saying anything incriminates us and they use against us? So when he says here, I violated my rights, when he, when he said, opened his mouth in the wrong way, didn't he violate his own rights? And so we have to look at this as, again, that, that's just what happens to us. I don't want to condemn this guy that much. But it is, it is a very serious problem that I see people doing over and over. And I assume at some point I'm going to be guilty of my own uh, interpretation because at some point you can't know enough of how these people you run their tactics and strategies. That's why I read some of this stuff. I'm looking, it's like an education. I'm going, okay, they do there. Okay, I would have to go here. When they said that, I would have to say this. When they do this, I'm going to have to go over there and do that. I'm going to have to create this. I'm going to have to have a setup before that. I educate myself ahead of time because I'll tell you, when I read through some of the stuff, the tactics you see on this are like any other cop. Only the subject matter of the, of the discussion changes relative to the certain laws you'll need and the things that you have to give or maybe not have. Like I said, why do we carry a device that creates a world that they can take and they've made the rules around being able to take or keep from you? When you can set it up to have nothing on it, learn a little bit more about it so you don't have anything on it, or maybe have play games with them. Who cares? You'll hear the guys, the office says, I'm, all, I'm here all day. Okay, well, that just shows you where you're going to be at. Well, you're going to be here all day playing my... Uh, my uh, CAPTCHA <laughs> on my phone to get in. You want to get in? Get in here. And then you get in. When he gets in, if, if he ever gets to get in, there's some end of, you have to play some game to get in. you got to know where all the ins and outs. He gets in and gets into where, folks? Another sign that says, well, you got virtual tokens. That's with all the information you're going to get. So he's got all day? Okay, I'll take up his day if I know that. 
So why don't we plan ahead? Why don't we look at how they're going to regard us? Why I told you we worked for I worked two days with my colleague to prepare him on a three-minute meeting because this dynamic is sitting in there. So why for? Well, I don't know why for. Ultimately, folks, we just have a mission we're on. We're trying to bring back an objective basis so people can get back to producing in the fo in in the public land in the public domain for miners and uh, agriculture entries. We're just trying to get people back into work so that we do use the resources that people need, put them in jobs and all this other stuff. That's all. What? That's all. Why? Who? Uh, what? Are, who cares? Not a job for me. But I, I don't know, I do it anyway. So I guess we could have all our reasons why we don't, or we can just keep working with what appears to be what needs to be had. Uh, well, let me read the story here about this journalist. Remember, this is the press being attacked by a U.S. border official who now knows the terrible powers of the United States. And what have I been saying? How come this journalist, uh, investigative reporter, doesn't know this, folks? They can be listening behind the woodshed, and they would have got it 10 years ago. I should have kept my mouth shut about the guacamole. That made things worse for me. Otherwise, what I'm about to describe uh, can ha could happen to any American who travels internationally. It happened 3,295 times last year. Interjection, folks. Shame on us. Shame on us. My work, as I go on, uh, Seth, Harper, Harp, Seth Harp writes this, My work as a journalist has taken me to foreign countries, including frequent trips to Mexico. On May 13th, I was returning to the United States from Mexico City when, passing through the immigration at the Austin airport, I was pulled out of line for secondary screening. A quasi-custodial law enforcement process that takes place in the Homeland Security Zone at the airport. So this gentleman knows a bit here, folks. Why wasn't he more prepared? Well, you'll hear how we go some of our preparation and do things that we shouldn't and because of maybe good reasons why like in this case don't eat and it pulls you down and it gets you vulnerable he, he went into a, a war zone hungry if you will unprepared making excuses for something he knew was custodial in nature if he got there and you're looking at what? A simple decision by someone you have no control over. To me, this is no different than the, the mosaic program, someone looking on an AI program and deciding that the output interests them enough to look at you a little bit closer. Austin is where I was born and raised. So you folks of you in Austin, sound minds and all down in there, I think. This one's for you too. Not far away. This is how it works. Austin is where I was born and raised, and I usually get waved through immigration after one or two questions. I'm also a white man. More on that later. This time, when my turn came to show my passport, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection officer was more aggressive than usual in his questioning. I told him I'd been in Mexico for seven days for work, that I was a journalist, and that I traveled to Mexico often, as he could see from my passport. That wasn't enough for him, though. He wanted to know subs the substance of, my, of the story I was working on, which didn't sit right with me. I tried to skirt the question, but he came back to it pointedly. Let me go back to that paragraph. He knows that journalism is under scrutiny. He hasn't been touched by it before, but he knows in the news that since long time, journalism was in scrutiny. We've known it since Assange for sure, if we didn't know uh, anything else or the intercept, where this part, this statement comes out of. We, these people know all this. They know they're under the scrutiny. So why did he talk again, condemn himself by being honest to even answer the question? Why would, he, why would you go into this and say, knowing that the status of journalists would give you a mark, notwithstanding you may not have ever been attacked from it before, why would you be using that at all? Instead of finding out what the system is going to not look at, and use those things instead. I'm going to go visit. I'm going to go on a holiday. I'm going to go vacation. I'm going to the museum to look at dem bones, uh, art. Uh, go through the look at maybe into things like that's not under scrutiny underneath international law. 
Why do we bring ourselves into this point where we say, I'm a journalist? See, that's an ego thing, even though we know better. I'm working on a story. Now you're condemning yourself. Now he wants to know more. Do you have the right to shut up now? No, you've just let him in. It'd be almost different, no different than if you're on the stand, a witness stand. You open the door to a prosecutor or a, uh, to the uh, the attorney to questioning, and you get you open the door, and now you can't shut it. This is not an unintelligent guy. And you're not unintelligent listeners, so we can take this as a lesson, object lesson, and we can learn that uh, how to analyze when they ask us these things, uh, even when even on the street. See, it's the same thing. What do you want to respond to? Find the more neutral spot to be and answer that way. Have a bunch of these neutral answers that don't really build to any place. Once they start probing like that and you have no answer and they keep, now we get them on harassment, don't we? Now the problem is, he's going to walk up to you with a, face, a smiley face and he's going to try and pretend like he's your friend a bit and you're not going to want to shake the boat, right? Well, at some point, the boat is being, they're drilling holes in the boat you think you're in and it's going to sink real quick. Here's his admission now of another thing, another vulnerability. So the more your vulnerabilities that he put on himself, the higher protections you need to start rising and understanding your condition. The more weak you walk into a fight, the more tricks you better have to be better to have to come to play to end the condition as much and as quick as possible, or make the record of of its violation. It still protects you. He says here, I was going on three hours of sleep, and I hadn't had anything to eat for the last twelve hours besides some popcorn and peanuts and a monster energy drink. Had my blood sugar been higher, I might have cheerfully told him. He might have, he might not. Look at the problem here. Maybe it wouldn't have mattered anyway. All right, so this is the other thing. You're taking the assumptions that uh, what you think is going to be working here, and he's in a place, he already knows he's in a place that's not what he thought it was. And it's happening quick to him, so he's not fluid on his response. And I'm saying this just, as, just to what, just to try to be an objective of witness of this. You never know about yourself in these conditions until you're pressed into it. So the better thing is to be prepared and hope even if you're only on three hours sleep and, and, no, and no blood sugar that you, you figure that out real quick. And maybe you ask him and say, well, I can't answer your questions because I'm about to pass out. In fact, my thought on this was if I was right there and he started to press me, I think I'm in a medical emergency came to my mind. And then you get on the record that you're under a problem, aren't you? Whether or not you end up in the hospital is a whole different thing. If you're going to be pulled out of line on this kind of a scrutiny, you think you're getting out soon? So had my blood sugar been higher, I might have cheerfully told him something irrelevant to what he wants. See, this is the problem. You're talking to yourself. He's, this is after the fact. He's still talking stories to himself. Instead, I mothered something about not having a legal obligation under the circumstances to disclose the contents of my reporting. Well, muttered something about having a legal obligation, not having a legal obligation. Okay, you better not mutter, and you better have a better proper statement. And my thing right there was, instead of uh, not having a legal obligation, I think I would have asked the question of what his authority was to ask that. I'm an investigative reporter. See, he failed already being a journalist, didn't he? No, he's making stuff up even after the fact. But my mind goes to, okay, yeah, he does have that, and he does have these things he could do, but is that the proper mode? Uh, once I'm being pulled out and scrutinized now, I feel there's a difference and a change. And I'm getting more now, um, my spider senses are stepping up, and I'm starting to kick into a gear. But I'd, I'd already see, I'd already know that I'm walking into that anyway if I was there. So I've got a different mindset going to begin with, so it's a little bit hard to really look at this a bit, a bit. However, you're hearing he knows, and yet he walks into it vulnerable, and then he mutters, he doesn't make a position, instead of, and it doesn't change the tide by putting the obligation of statement of authority, the right to ask, on him. It doesn't have to be that much. It said, well, uh, it's a proprietary. Uh, and so what's, what's your, your, lo your lawful right to, to inquire further? 
I think comes to my mind as a quick quick response is dialogue. So you got to come up with this stuff as you're talking. Whether that would be the right answer or not, if he's going to get stung anyway, I mean, it doesn't really matter what you say, but you better be saying the right stuff, not stuff to after the fact think would work. You got to be saying what's going to work. And this, again, happens on the street as well. The agent, whose name is uh, Monsevius, said he would see about that about him uh, not having to disclose this reporting. Now, he asked me to follow him into the secondary screening area. So he feels a bit of aggression. The additional questions had never been asked before, and that kind of rolls downhill pretty quick. So follow me to the screening area. If that didn't serve as a war, a big, the shot, uh, I don't know what else does. And he comes back, oh, come on, man. I said, checking the time on my phone, it was just afternoon, this is going to be a huge waste of time. And I looked right there and go, why does he have a phone? Why did he pull it out? Why did it have time on his phone? Why didn't he have zero on his phone? Why wasn't it wiped before he got there? I don't I don't know. Maybe someone could answer some of the why you don't do some of this other stuff instead of pulling out the evidence. That's another witness against you, and they know that. But here he pulls out his phone. Uh, this is just going to be a huge waste of time. The response from Mosevius, I'm here all day. He might have been 30 years old, clean cut, dark hair and light skin. He and I were close enough to age that there was definitely some male primate posturing going on between us. At one point, I told him that I had been in the army. Thank you for your service, he retorted excuse in the response here folks like that's going to make a status that pulls you up now i have a real problem with the whole point about secondary and utilizing that but you know when you heard that as an official you would think that that he worked for the army there's no record of uh dishonorable conduct at least in the record because they've got you checked out when you get there uh, that not that it was thank you for your service but that the question of being a threat should have been diminished through your oath of office to uphold those laws and no other due process. That is what you should have dealt with before when you went to the T, uh, went to the administrative side. When you put your list of things why you weren't supposed to be on the list or scrutinized or have to do any of this stuff anyway. Not that I want to make a status that's higher, but in fact you are, have a, with relative to what they're checking out, you have as evidence something that this agent should have never seen because you should have done it administrative side before as a, a restriction against their imposition to keep putting on you this enemy combatant. You see, thank you for your service, did not mean anything. He's now an enemy combatant to be scrutinized. Now, this author comes back and says, in retrospect, like he can really make this up, I, I was naive about the kind of energy agency CPB has become in the Trump era. Now, he politicizes it instead of doing what I've told you to do. Look at the reality of the, of the, of the battlefield. Until you start looking at the reality of the battlefield, you won't be prepared for these kinds of things. And I'm asking us all to learn better, to do better, and then do evolutionary engagement. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at reallibertymedia.com. That was quick. It looks like I'm still hooked up, too. Thank you for all your simulcasters and all the people that will put up this broadcast everywhere else that they do. Appreciate all what you do there. And I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature will. another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 